Welcome to another Wednesday devotional. I'm Rick. This is Justin, and we're glad that you're joining us. Uh, today we're going to be in Matthew chapter 5, uh, the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. If you want to go ahead and get your Bibles and open up to that, we'll be there in just a, a few moments. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father God, uh, as we always do, we ask you to guide us, Lord, today as we go into your word. Uh, as we study it, Father, help us to uh, find the true message that you have for our lives. But most of all, Father, we ask you to always give us the courage that we need to be able to take the things that you're speaking to us and apply it to our lives. Uh, not just to uh, have some sort of a head knowledge of it, but actually put it into our hearts, put it into our lives and put it into practice, Father, as we live uh, here amongst the world and uh, allow our lights to shine before that world. Thank you for Jesus who makes all things possible. Father, we thank you for your church and we ask you to continue to bless it. Continue to bless us here at Spanish Fort, Father, and just uh, be with those who are struggling. Uh, be with those, Father, who maybe are dealing with uh, sickness, especially uh, those who are struggling from this virus. And we just pray, Father, that you'll bring healing uh, to our land. There'll be answers for this, uh, this disease and uh, things that are going on. And we just pray, Father, that you will... Uh, be glorified in all things. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. And amen. Our all-subject question today is this. Um, uh, can you think of a food that at one time you probably thought was gross, but uh, now you really like? Um, I guess mine would be tomatoes. You know, I, I used to always like ketchup, but I never liked a tomato. But then as I've gotten older, I'll just eat, like, I'll eat a whole tomato, dice it up, and or slice it up and eat it. It's, it's good on a sandwich. Or we don't have bread at our house, but I just put some mayonnaise on it or something to eat the tomato by itself. Wow. Um, yeah, for me, it's broccoli. Uh, kind of interesting story. Uh, when me and Barb first got married, uh, I came home from from work and she had cooked supper and uh, I either didn't pay attention in the premarital counseling or, or something, but uh, as, as newlyweds, you know, you're supposed to compliment them and really like it and all that stuff. And so uh, I sat down at the table and she put everything on the table and there was a bowl of broccoli. And uh, I, I looked at her and I said, I don't eat trees. And uh, that didn't go over real well. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, she started putting cheese on it and I really liked it. It was really good that way. And then she weaned me off the cheese. And so now <laughs> we eat broccoli all the time and I really enjoy broccoli and everything. But at one point in time, I couldn't handle the smell and I didn't eat trees. So anyway, um, we're in Matthew's Gospel, chapter five. Uh, it's the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. And what uh, Matthew does is he paints this uh, panorama of pictures uh, to reveal to us really what Jesus was like. Uh, Jesus is the king who conquers uh, uh, the enemy attacking the, the, the hearts of people. He's the savior of mankind. He, uh, he is uh, the one that redeems us. He's the one that, that points us to the Father. But one of the most powerful pictures, I think, that he paints is, is right here at the beginning in, in Matthew chapter 5. And that's the picture of Jesus uh, as a servant. So let's read together Matthew 5, beginning verse 39. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Uh, we're going to focus in on this idea of, of, of going the second mile. And I guess really how that kind of relates into ser servanthood. Uh, but Jesus calls us to be a people who are willing to go uh, the, the second mile. And so in doing that, what, what does that really become a picture of? You know, it, in the context of this, it, these are actually laws that were okay for people to do. You know, if you, they, they, were, they were seen fair at the time. If someone was to take out your eye, then you would return and get theirs or if a Roman or a Roman soldier asked you to walk a mile, you would carry their stuff for a mile. Then once you got the mile, you would be finished. It was all about fairness and, and equality and stuff like that. But yet Jesus is saying, I want you to do more than that. I want you to, to show more than that. He's, I think he's saying, you know, he's changing 
the law to an attitude, this attitude of, of love and, and self-sacrifice and, and willing to go above and beyond even what's asked by the law, even, you know, willing to give up what is fair for us for the benefit of others. It's, it's a higher calling because we're called to be different. Yeah, and he, he really shows three things in this text here um, of examples of, of, of a second mile service. Uh, uh, one being that we're willing to, you know, turn the other cheek. Um, the other one being that we're willing to give someone our coat. And of course, the context of the idea of the second mile is the fact that uh, the Roman soldier could compel the, the, the Jew to carry his pack for one mile. And uh, the Jews hated that so badly, and they resented it so badly. They actually had uh, mile marker posts, and they knew exactly what a mile was, and they weren't going any further. And so, like you said, it goes to attitude, and their attitude was not real good about having to tote this guy's pack. And so Jesus is saying, you know, instead of just doing that one mile, what you have to do, uh, go a second mile. And so to me, it speaks to this deliberate act of grace, you know, not just doing the minimum requirement as we've talked about before, but doing some deliberate act of grace towards someone else, going be above and beyond, uh, so to speak. Um, and so Jesus is calling us to do this with a purpose, and maybe we've already touched on that a little bit, but what is really that purpose? You know, in the kind of beginning, he's kind of describing kind of what people in the kingdom look like. I think he's calling here the idea that we're to be different, we're to have a different reaction, we're to have a different attitude, where we should be willing to forgive, to to put those things aside and, and, to, and to handle things differently than the normal person would handle them, all because of that relationship that we have with Christ. Yeah, and it's about uh, everything we do in pointing people to Jesus. And I don't think we emphasize that maybe enough that, uh, you know, whatever the opportunity is, we need to use whatever that is to, to show Christ and also point people towards Christ. And so in this particular case, it's using these opportunities for service uh, to point someone to Christ. Because, you know, if, if imagine you're that Roman soldier and you're walking down the road and you compel this guy to carry your pack for you. And you get to the mile marker and you probably stop and he keeps going. And you're like, what is going on? He says, oh, I'll take it another mile or whatever. Immediately in your mind, you're going to think, what motivates that person to do that? And even in our lives today, when we deliberately look for opportunities to show grace to other people and go out of our way to do that, it's going to immediately trigger something in their mind to wonder why would they do that or whatever. And we need to make sure that it's, you know, certainly not for our own praise, but it's just a way in which we can point people to Christ. And that becomes our purpose for doing those things. And when that becomes our purpose, it, it really, you know, creates the, the, the reason for doing it in, in the first place and everything. Um, what different set of actions or behaviors do we need to have in order to be able to, uh, to, to be a second mile servant? This is probably kind of a cop out, but I wrote down love. Um, cause it's kind of the, the center of everything and, and everything kind of revolves off of that, that idea of forgiveness. So the idea of doing more than you have to, or caring more about the, the person than yourself all revolves around kind of that basis and that fundamental building block of that we love. God and we love others even more than ourselves. And working off of love, I think it's about a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's a decision that, that we make um, that we're going to allow the power of God uh, to work in us to not only change us, but also change the person that we are serving. And, and so I think it's important that we have those attitudes of love, but we also have to remember that you know, I have to make that decision. I have to make that choice. Um, so maybe a relevant thought here is that, you know, how does this idea of, of being a second mile servant really speak to maybe uh, the situations that we see going on in our world today? Well, I mean, 
we have to be willing, first of all, you know, with, with this virus and us being having to be separated and not being together, you know, we got, we need to take time to make sure that we're reaching out to others and, and caring about others and spending time and making an effort to just to even be friendly, to drop them a card, give them a call, send them a text, however it is, just to keep that bond together. And, and also, you know, with the, with kind of the hatred and the, and the divide in our country that we have right now, you know, we as Christians have to be, you know, understanding and forgiving and, and willing to, to, to work together to, to build these things back up to where they need to be. We have to look for ways to be deliberate in mm -hmm. these type of things. And, and we certainly have those opportunities with everything that's going on in our world today. So really it, it, it speaks to the fact that, that opportunities are there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and we have that opportunity. And I think Jesus is teaching here that, that, that the heart of the Christian um, it, it really is that window through which the world can see God as we reveal him to the world. And we need to look at the opportunities that the virus and the, uh, the injustices and all the things that are going on with the, with the world today uh, that we can show Christ and we can show love and we can show God's kindness and, and all the things that are revealed in the heart of God. Um, maybe closing out, can you, you think of a time when maybe someone in your life or maybe even yourself or maybe you witnessed uh, someone uh, going the second mile and really how that might have impacted you? And there, there's been a ton of people who've done a lot for me to allow me to get to where I am today and, and help me out a lot. But, uh, uh, one that's I've noticed here even recently and I mean we were there today even um, we have some friends who um, whose uh, mother was, was in a car wreck and she was in the hospital and they're not allowed to go in and see her because of the, of the virus and everything and now they've moved her to a, another place and you know they don't live anywhere near here and just hearing the stories about how you know when they had to come down here that their hotel had been paid for and that it is continuously things have constantly overflowed with them I'm even going today, there was stuff written all over the, the wall of people who have just come and, and sit with her and just sit there looking at a window. I mean, cause you, you, can, you can get up to the glass, you can see um, her mother sitting in there, but she, at times she knows, at times she doesn't, but just being there with the family, just sitting there in the, in the hot sun, cause it's, not, warm, it's cold, not cold right now, but just being there and, and just sitting with them and talking with them and just being there for them you know, and there's been a lot of people that have gone out of their way to show that love and that compassion that they care. I know it's meant a ton of them. She was even talking about today what it's meant to have all these people reach out and to, to be there for them. Yeah. You know, there have been a ton of times in my life where um, someone would do something and, and, and my response might be, you know, you didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. And the truth is they didn't, but yeah, they did. And almost every time that happens, it makes me stop and think, you know, how many times in my life maybe have I had an opportunity um, and I didn't have to do it and and I didn't. <laughs> and and Jesus is, is saying, open your eyes. And Jesus is saying, you know, there, there's there's opportunities all the time to, to be that second mile individual, you know, and, and do the things. Uh, that, that manifest that attitude. I think we live in a one mile world. We, we live in a world that's, that's, that's selfish and really only thinks about self. And, and what Jesus is trying to do is he's trying to move us beyond ourselves and, and to realize that the impact that we can have on people's lives. Because I know when people have done those things and, and I've experienced it, uh, it really challenges me to think the next time I get a chance to do that, I'm going to do that for somebody or I'm going to try to go that second mile. And so for, I think for all of us, as we look at this text, uh, we, we need to strive to be second mile people. And um, I promise you, you don't have to look far. Uh, God will make an opportunity and open the door for us to be able to do that. And maybe by being a little more conscious in doing that, um, we'll certainly uh, bless people's lives, we'll bless ours, but we also, we will lift Jesus up and we'll look more like him. Uh, let's close it out with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, this is an awesome, amazing God. We're so thankful for this day and all the blessings that you bless our lives with, Lord. We pray that 
you be with each and every one of us as we go about the week, that we would see these opportunities that you put in front of us, that we can show your light and show your love and, and to show others you and us, Lord. We pray that you would continue to be with everyone and as the um, viruses continue to keep us apart, Lord, we pray that we can continue to every day grow closer to you and grow closer with one another as a family. Pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.